Yeah, it's tough. Um, and that's why President Obama is, is fighting so hard to make it happen. That's why members of Congress who are supporting it are working so hard. So I, I think it's, it's tough, when, when the, but it's going. And when the members go home for recess, which they're about to do, it's my hope that they're going to hear from folks in their community that says, don't you dare fail to deliver us what you've promised. Bring well, it home. I, I want to know if all the other guests are as optimistic about the prospects and the economic benefits as Judy Fader is. Greg? I think there's broad agreement that we need to reduce health care costs and cover the uninsured. I'm just afraid that the House bill as it currently stands is, is not going to do either. It's going to bend the cost curve in the wrong direction. As I said earlier, CBO has said that they're going to spend more and hope for savings later. I think we ought to bank the dollars first as American families do today. Uh, the, according to the Congressional Budget Office and the scores I've seen, the bill would increase the deficit by $239 billion. Sure, it's deficit neutral if you look at part of the score, but if you look at the whole score, that's, that's what I've seen. Uh, the surtax that we've talked about paying for is a tax on individuals and small businesses. They're the job creators. We're in a recession. Um, you know, altogether, there's $818 billion in new taxes and the bill still isn't paid for. Um, and, you know, a lot of savings beyond that are, tr are coming from the Medicare program. Well, the Medicare program has $38 trillion in unfunded obligations. I think that those dollars should go back into the program to improve its uh, uh, fiscal stability. Uh, we shouldn't divert those dollars. And so I think there are a number of key issues here that, that ought to be sorted out. And I think over the August recess, that's time to, to look at the details and talk about these trade-offs. Sharon Baskerville? Um, I think you've just heard that sort of perpetuation of, you know, taking some concerns and turning them in uh, to a mythical fears, um, which always defeat us, making the perfect the enemy of the good. This is the first bill I've seen that covers the broad issues that people like me down on the ground, who know how it really is while folks are up there in think tanks swirling, gives us hope to change the game on ending premature death and disparity in health care and creating a potentially equitable system that should lead to health. So The House bill is the only way to do that, though? That's the implication. Though, well, but, right? but Sharon, so when you talk about fear, the small businesses, small businesses, the vast majority of small businesses are exempted from requirements and don't pay that tax. So that's, the surtax. That's, um, the surtax and from any requirements to offer coverage. They're given help to offer coverage. Well, as the small business representative, it would be fair to say that the negotiations are still on the way. And so far, um, the needle seems to be moving at least in the right direction. Uh, for instance, the an agreement between the Blue Dog Coalition and uh, Waxman moved uh, the the thresholds for the triggers for a for the payments by employers uh, to a higher threshold to make sure. Now we're not entirely sure that it should be based on total dollar figures of payroll. Maybe it should be fa if, if, if done in a different type of formula. Um, a, maybe more by employer employer size category. Make sure that those that are hurting in the small group insurance market are the ones that actually see the benefits and that are. Not not if we end not end up victimizing the victims essentially of the insurance market, um, and we, because in the end we, this is too important to fail. That's right. um, a, we feel a lot like Charlie Brown always trying to kick the football, and Lucy <laughs> just picks it up, and right. uh, and every time we try to do it, but we we're going to keep on trying because it's too, it has too much of a potential stimulative stimulative effect on the economy. If you take away this onerous essentially tax of being able to retain and attract workers and to be able to compete with large businesses. And essentially, we're at a disadvantage. Small businesses, ask anybody that pays for their own insurance as That's an employer, right. ask any like small me. business, <laughs> that they will tell you that it is the most painful thing that they deal with, that 10, 12% per year increase in their premiums. And I guess the last thing, though, is that we would agree that the finance structures have to be sensible. We need to make sure, like I said, not to victimize the victim. It needs, we need shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure individuals, insurance companies, government, employers, all share in the costs, but we need to make sure that it's done in a sensible way, that it doesn't diminish our inter entrepreneurial capacity and doesn't diminish the ability of employers to expand coverage. And with that, essentially, uh, making sure also that we don't find ways to punish growth for small businesses so that, the, that they, uh, we limit, say, for instance, 
assistance ability to enter into the exchanges to being less than nine employee operations. We worked with Senator Merkley to pass an amendment to increase the help bill to 50 employers or uh, to up to 50 employers, uh, employee, sorry, employee size category employers to be able to participate in the exchanges. We're going to continue to work to make those improvements and that's the issue. We're optimistic that a lot of the negotiations are moving in the right direction and we hope that they'll get there because like Charlie Brown, we're going to keep trying to keep, uh, kick, uh, keep kicking at that football.